Yo, we got a crazy list today, Russ. Second appearances. We have Variant Comics, Marvel Spec. Kamala had her trailer. Oh my gosh, Tom. And it's not just new books we're talking about. We're talking about reprints on this list. And what good list would it be without a Star Wars book? They got to hit the like button, Russ. Slap the subscribe while they're here. And if they comment, they're going to enter to win this whatnot Omni-Man Invincible One variant at the list at number 10. We have Catwoman issue number 41, the 1 in 25 variant. This thing is stunning. Brand new this week. $30 $30 sales right out the gate. And if you've been paying attention to Catwoman for the last couple issues, you know that these 1 in 25 Sosa Mica variants are absolute fire. That's right. I'm kind of getting some Joshua Middleton vibes, not necessarily for the artist style, but the accomplishment of doing almost a collection of the same characters over multiple variants that are so unique that collectors long term are going to look at this as a moment that is like famous for the character. That is a really great way to put it, Tom. When we had the Batgirl Josh Middleton variants, every single one that he released was like upping himself. And all of a sudden, people had to go back and figure out what Josh had done previously. Now people are scrambling to figure out what this artist has done previously. So 41's on the list, but Zosa Micah started doing these variants of Catwoman with 39, issue 40. Both are doing really well. And we're seeing solicitations for 42 and 43 that features Harley Quinn on the cover. And the way that you know a artist is getting super popular popular is when other publishers start hunting them down. So we are seeing Dynamite has actually started poaching Sosa Micah. Shout out Nick Brody to be able to work on the Vampirella Valentine's Day one shot, which is a one in 20 variant and the Red Sonia Valentine's Day one in 21 shot. It's great to see so much renewed interest in Catwoman. And I think that has a lot to do with Zoe Kravitz portrayal in the new Batman movie. And they're not stopping there because Red Sonia 7 is being solicited to debut in March with a Sosa Micah cover. Comic fam, take a look at the best app to learn about funny books. We're talking key collector comics. There's a category on there called Nick's Picks. This is a category that I have to check out every single week as soon as I get that notification. This is a list that is curated by the creator of the app filled with key comics that you have to consider. And number nine on the list, we have New Teen Titans number nine. This is the second appearance of a major major DC villain that I've always thought was underappreciated and undervalued. $12 average sales for a raw copy and a high sale of $100 for a raw, but keep in mind we saw a 9.8 back in January go for only $90. This is a 625% increase in copies sold this week, and I think Deathstroke is an amazing villain that people are just sleeping on. Some of the ways you can tell the trajectory of a second appearance in comic books as it pertains to their value is to look at their first appearance. So let's take a look at Teen Titans issue number two, Deathstroke's first app. This book in January hit a height of $1,800. I checked that on GPA. It seems like it's almost an anomaly, but keep that in mind because we saw other $1,200 and $1,300 sales since then. This last week, I was able to spot a $860 auction that ended for a 9.8. I think that there is some major room on this book right now. Deathstroke is an amazing character and with heights that have at least exceeded seated 1300 seeing a second appearance that you can get for ten dollars in high grade seems like a steal so deathstroke is such an amazing villain and people shouldn't be forgetting about it the fact that we finally saw some of the concept art from ben affleck's aborted project oh my god he looks so great there with so many screen adaptations of this character dc clearly is showing their cards here they have every intention to continue to utilize the Terminator in the DC universe. Comic fam, utilize that code TOM101 on the best comic app in existence, Key Collector Comics. Unlock the multiple categories that's going to get you ahead of the curve and spot those comics that you have to own that have some potential long term. Number eight on the list, Timeless number one, The Third Print. We are seeing $8 average sales on this book that if you didn't buy it the first time for the Miss Minutes cover or the second time, you gotta buy it for this one. That's right. This is actually pretty fun. So $8 average sales on a book that's, what was it, $6 out the gate? Mm -hmm. That's cover price. I... Talked about this before with you, Russ, that this was a fantastic job that Marvel did. They put together a comic that was, yes, a little bit on the pricey side that could be looked at as just a marketing opportunity because this is a book to showcase what is to come in the Marvel Universe. However... It's not just ads. This thing is filled with an amazing Kang story, some reveals, foreshadowing. You see Thanos wielding that infinity gauntlet covered 
Mjolnir. And we also see a new character on the third print only that no one has any idea who she is. So the fact that Miracle Man is on the cover of this book is why I liked it. And then all of a sudden we see this Black Panther female with white hair. I mean, no one knows who this is or what's happening, but there's good speculation from a few different sources that Dark Ages number four has the first appearance of Black Panther and Storm's daughter. Nikosa Zana, the daughter of the T'Challan king. We have her first appearance as a child in issue four indeed, and it's an alternate reality in this four-issue miniseries. Could this be the same character in the future? We know that Kang is dabbling with the timeline. There's multiverse stuff at play. Alternate reality stuff is how she was introduced in the first place, so it's not far of a stretch to think that this may be the same character that's being featured on the third print. And now at the list at number seven, we have a comic book that you had to do a mail-away coupon from Wizard Magazine to acquire. We have Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, number one half. I remember buying Wizard Magazine back then. I loved opening that little plastic bag and getting all of those cards and all of those mail-away things. And if you bought issue number 94 and mailed away, you could potentially have received this comic book. Well, it's now selling for $35 raw and $230 for a CGC 9.8. This is the first appearance of Everyone in The Phantom Menace, there's even a sketch of Darth Maul in there. The important character we're caring about right now is Qui-Gon Jinn. There is rumor that we will be seeing him in the Obi-Wan series. Whether it'll be a flashback or he shows up as a Force ghost is yet to be seen. We do have Darth Maul in sketch in this comic, but the rest of this lineup makes a full appearance. We have Anakin Skywalker as a child, and we know he becomes Darth Vader eventually, so that's a pretty big moment. We also have a first appearance of Jar Jar Binks. I hope we get to see Jar Jar in the future. (laughs) And we have, as mentioned, Qui-Gon Jim, and we have Padme making her first appearance in here. And with a 317% increase in copies sold in seven days, members are clearly believing that this spec makes sense. Why wouldn't we see the sensei to Obi-Wan. For those of you that like chasing tough books, there is also a gold foil numbered edition of this wizard. Keep your eye out for that one. At the list, at number six, we told you, we warned him, Russ. We have second appearances to talk about, and this one is debatable, and we're going to cause a ruckus with it because you know we got to point it out when we're talking about Deadpool. We have X-Force number two. We have the second appearance of Deadpool, first appearance of Weapon X, Garrison Kane, and an increase of copies sold of 187% this week. Now, we found out that a director was attached to Deadpool 3. Fantastic. Pushing this book up in value. We also have New Mutants 98 that we got to talk about here in a second. However... I'm thinking that the biggest news that I've heard about Deadpool 3 so far in the last few months, aside from it happening, is that it's getting an R rating. And that was like the biggest concern that the community had when they found out about the Marvel acquisition by Disney in the first place. Sean Levy, the director of Free Guy, The Adam Project, has already shown us that he works really, really well with Ryan Reynolds, and I am looking forward to this. That's the reason why we're seeing this book go for $10 average sales and a $90 CGC 9.8 sale. Let's take him back to New Man's 98, some more Liefeld goodness. That book, First Deadpool, almost a year to the month, had seen some of the biggest gains it's ever had. The heights of a newsstand, New Mutants 98, hit $4,000. We had a $3,100 sale for a direct market copy. And a year later, this last couple months, we're seeing copies of the direct market edition hit $2,500, which is a little bit of a decline, yes, but the newsstand could be purchased for near 3 k We just saw a $3,100 sale end on auction. Those types of margins should be way different as it pertains to direct market and newsstand. I suspect that directs may continue to drop if that newsstand could be purchased for as low as it's been. New Mutants 98 has been climbing for a long time, and the height of the direct market right now is selling for the trough of what the newsstand was selling for this is crazy how the market is but if these numbers are too big for you guys you should look at x-force number one where you can get a bagged variant that has deadpool's rookie card in it that's an affordable book it's a 187 percent increase in copies sold for x-force number two it's a high print run book but it's still in demand because deadpool is on the cover 
And now at the list at number five, a comic book that no one was specking on unless they hit the subscribe button because they watch our video every week because we talked about the character last week. Silver Sable and the Wild Pack issue number nine, seeing $5 average sales and a one thousand and one hundred percent increase in copies sold on a dollar bin book hot damn this is the first full appearance of ernst sablanova he is the original silver sable and the father of the current silver sable it's a book from the 90s that not a lot of people were thinking about even though it is the origin of silver sable we did some research and found out there are zero copies on the CGC census. So we may see a few of those in six to nine months whenever CGC spits them out. So why are we talking about this this week? Well, it's because of last week's coverage. We talked about the Craven solo movie announcement that spiked spectacular Spider-Man 116. The Foreigner was cast. Who's the Foreigner? He's a marksman, and he is the future husband of the Silver Sable. That glorious Spider-Man saber tooth cover spiked, and that also made us start to look around. What were we now going to spec on? Well, Silver Sable, of course, Amazing Spider-Man 265, her first appearance. And we know one thing about this movie is that it's supposed to be a like family movie as it pertains to the narrative. We're going to see the fathers of some of these characters. And Russell Crowe was attached to this film. So a lot of spec has been, who is he going to portray? Well, if we know that we have Craven, could he be Craven, Or could we see him portray Silver Sable's father, which put this book on our list this week? A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, there was a comic book released in 1977, but not that one. Number two, number four on our list, Star Wars number two, first appearance of Obi-Wan and Han Solo and Chewie. This book is seeing a high sale this week of $1,920 for a CGC 9.8. But that seems surprisingly low, doesn't it, Tom? This book is grossly undervalued. I've said that multiple times. And with the series so soon, the trailer dropping just last week, $200 average sales on this comic book for a raw issue, that seems very low. And that $1,900.98 is going to seem kind of high until you consider what it sold for in December 2021, $3,150. This is a mega key Star Wars book. You said it. Obi-Wan Kenobi in story's first appearance. Han Solo in story, first appearance. Chewbacca. We also see the Millennium Falcon in comics for the first time, as well as the Death Star and Jabba the Hutt, regardless of the character being drawn, not looking anything like the movies because they didn't know what it was going to look like. He's named, and that still counts. This book is consistently popular, even if underpriced. It's still a 106% increase in copies sold over last week. Also, keep in mind that there is a super rare 35 cent price variant. The highest graded was sold at a heritage auction last year. 9.4 highest on the census went for $8,100. Ooh, hot damn. Comic fam, Marvel was testing the markets in certain small areas, and this book got that price difference and has become a ghost grail for all Star Wars and Comic collectors in general, we have at the list at number three, more Star Wars comic books and spec to talk about. We have Star Wars The High Republic, issue number five, seeing a $5 average sale this week, and an increase of copies sold of 168%, and... Members be arguing about first appearances. Oh, Tom and I just had a great conversation about what we actually think the first appearance of this is. So comic fan, bear with us. We're going to have some fun on this one. Dude, I think by the end of the conversation, we agreed to disagree that you disagree with me and Key Collector. (laughs) I disagree with Key Collector and you. And Key Collector disagrees with us. And we have to know what the community thinks because this first appearance is dicey. So the reason why the book's on the list this week is because it's the first full appearance of Vernestra Rowe. There is a secret project, there's a Star Wars project called Grammar Rodeo, and people are thinking that Rowe kind of sounds like Rodeo. We're also seeing that she has her pink lightsaber, which some people are comparing to a lasso. I think it looks more like a whip, but however you want to explain it, Grammar Rodeo could mean something. And we have multiple comic books that feature her. And if you're going, well, just like, what's the first one? That should count. Well, then we got to take it back to the classic case of the Bronze Age, Hulk 180 and 181, which is the benchmark that really I think all of us agree on on this show, that if the character has a greater 
moment in the comic book than Hulk 180, it becomes a first full appearance. So let's take you through the appearances. I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And we have issue two to talk about first. Um, this has two different panels and a word bubble that the character speaks and she is called by name. It's my opinion that if this was a character that I really wanted to collect that I cared about, this was a Hellboy appearance, I would be gunning for issue number two all day long and it totally makes sense to me why members would think this is a full appearance because that is more coverage on the page than Logan gets in Hulk 180. Now, we're calling that the first cameo, but then we're looking at number three, where we end up seeing no words, two shots, one in the distance and one in the back of her head. That's less of a cameo than the previous issue number two. So we agree, cameo for sure in issue number three. I can absolutely understand why someone would pick number two as a first appearance, but it makes sense if you think it's just a little bit less that that could be considered a cameo. And then we have issue four, two different word bubbles, uh, entire fight scene, and you see her lightsaber. Now that's the book that I think is first full appearance because she's on multiple pages and doing more things than just being on the table. She's actually in a fight scene. Now the book that made the list this week is number five, which which is her first solo story, they actually give her more stuff to do. And I think this should be first solo story and number four should be first full appearance. So issue five cuts away from the ongoing narrative to focus on this character. This issue feels like a Hulk 181 moment where Logan is here. This right here is where Key Collector puts on the app as the first full appearance. And that makes sense to me. I can absolutely understand that. However, that is if you are agreeing that issue two, three, and four are not enough. And when you combine those issues, that's when I look at number two. However, I want to hear what the community has to say. This is definitely going to be a big debate. And I know you Star Wars fans love your appearances. We want to hear it. Comment down below. Comic fam, we told you about it last video, but we're so hyped to announce that we have a something is killing the children. 21 going out in every single mail call. And we have two different versions of the cover done by Peach Momoko in April. We kept this under wraps for so long, so long. And everyone else was talking about there's something is killing the children. Chilling, Tom and I are like, waiting, we can't say scheming. it. We can't say it. <laughs> but we finally dropped it. I'm so excited that Peach is on board to do a something is killing the children for us. Thank you, Peach. Thank you so much, Peach. ComicTom101.com to secure your copy. We have other secret variants in the works. No worries. But you can hit the link in the description. Support the show. Give me an excuse to send you comics every single month at the list at number two. Finally. After what felt like years, Kamala Khan is coming. Oh my gosh. The trailer dropped this week, spiking books left and right. Check out the Trending 20 list, a larger list over on Key Collector. There are multiple Ms. Marvel books that have made that list this week. But you know we had to put Ms. Marvel issue number five on the list, seeing $25 average sales at number two, by the way. And 8.0 hit $60 because there were no other higher grades that I could find. However, at the time of this filming, there is a 9.8 with 26 bids hitting $170 with multiple days left. So number five is a big book because it's the origin of Ms. Marvel. It's also the cameo appearance of the inventor, but that's not why we're really talking about this. It's because it's an iconic cover that is very clearly shown in the trailer and used as one of the promotional posters for this show. This is one of those weird moments, man, because we've been covering comics every week for the comic fam. Hit the subscribe button for quite a long time. The first time we talked about this book was November 2019, and that's how long we've been waiting for this show and how long the spec was pointing towards the inventor. However, it's all about the cover. The poster is now made this a iconic classic comic book and that's why it's spiking and I don't necessarily think that the inventor is going to be in the show because of how rooted in reality the trailer is so unfortunately we're not going to see the DNA mixed with Thomas Edison and the cockatiel <laughs> oh my God. I know it's weird it's, dude. it's really absurd so in the trailer, we do actually see a group of antagonists. None of them look avian. <laughs> and we end up seeing the red dagger, who very clearly doesn't have any wings, so we're probably not going to see any bird-like antagonists. Maybe. 
because they have changed some things, but also there's still spec pointing towards the fantastical. Let me continue because we have Kamala getting a different spin on her powers. In the comics, she's an inhuman, very similar power structures to Reed Richards. And I suspect that they're changing that to kind of differentiate her from the Fantastic Four's superhero and making her more like Ms. Marvel, Captain Marvel. And they give her these, what she describes as quantum bands. Kind of said that weird. Describes it as quantum bands, comic fam. And she still has that like gigantic power and it's seemingly playing out like a Green Lantern effect. So rooted in reality, maybe we're not going to see these weird characters. Maybe we're not going to see Lockjaw. Or will we? Now that's the interesting thing. Even if you're trying to distance her from the Inhumans, CBR leaked a list of titles of episodes and episode number two is called Lockin' Jaws. So we may very well see a little bit of an Inhumans tie-in here. We've been hoping, man. I mean, if Illuminati is indeed happening, we know Black Bolt, or at least a variant of which, may be on the screen, which could make the human spec all play out. I digress. I got to know what the community thinks because if they comment, it'll answer to win this giveaway. And now let's chat about the number one book reprint of the week. Comic fam, this is a poignant moment. Number one on the list, JLA Avengers. There is a graphic novel that was printed by the Hero Initiative to celebrate the life of George Perez, one of the most astounding and amazing artists and creators that we have seen in a very, very long time. Prolific, talented, uh, artist who adores his fans and this hobby and all of his creations, all the superheroes. George Perez is a legend, and this comic graphic novel hasn't been reprinted in how many years? Since 2008. So this is the first reprinting in 14 years of this book. It makes sense that there would be a premium for this book and the fact that only 7,000 of them are made makes sense that there is a premium for this book. But this just feels like a lot and it feels like people are kind of profiteering off of this. This was a $30 MSRP with the proceeds going to charity in celebration I looked up the reasoning behind the price as well as the units that were created. Bleeding Cool did a great article on it, citing that it is a combination of restrictions that they are faced with as it pertains to charity assemblies of comics, printing them, and getting the job done as quickly as they were trying to do. Because unfortunately, because of George, they had to hit the ground running to make this a possibility. And kudos to the Hero Initiative for making it a reality. And Marvel and DC both putting everything aside so that they can get George a copy of his book in hand. These books are selling for $200 consistently on eBay. Some on auction are going higher. And I know a lot of collectors that have bought this book and it is going directly into their personal collection to celebrate the life of of George. I also know some people who are selling their books and giving the proceeds to the charity, paying it forward. And I encourage people who got multiple copies, because we know there are people out there that are scalping this. We know there are people out there that are just trying to profiteer off of this. And this was made for a good cause to celebrate a good life. And it'd be great if you did something positive with it. Yeah, this is definitely something that I would encourage comic fan members to consider when there is a charity that is directly attached to a, a comic book or, or a collectible or something that you're purchasing in the event that you decide to sell it. And, and I don't judge anyone for selling like this is it's, we do what you want to do with your right. collectibles, right? Everyone has their own reasons to do what they do, but to consider providing some of those proceeds back to that charity, because that's, the way it was intended. And I just think it's more ethical that way. When this book was solicited, they told us it was going to be allocated and it was a very tight allocation on this book. It is just an amazing thing to be able to celebrate the life of George Perez and even more amazing to see him hold this in his hands and get to enjoy his own creation. This is a four issue series that's collected in a one shot of sorts. The whole story takes place out of continuity, so you don't need to read a bunch of stuff to enjoy it. And you get these classic moments, Dark Side throwing away the Infinity Gauntlet because it was useless for him to use, Thor fighting Superman, nearly taking him out, Superman lifting Mjolnir. It's just as classic as superhero comics get. When presented with his copy, George Perez had this to say. 
I am so incredibly overjoyed to hear that my fanboy dream is going to be available to a whole new generation of comic book fans who weren't there when it was printed that many years ago. And it's wonderful that it's happening while I'm still alive to see it reprint. Whatever it was that allowed this reprint to be released, I am very grateful. And on behalf of all the fans, all I can say is well done, DC and Marvel. And of course... I am so elated that all the profits from this reprint are going to one of my favorite personal charities. That is how you geek responsibly. Enough said.